Some of the most interesting films are the ones that manage to put us right in the center of a character's emotional headspace. Film critic Roger Ebert famously described the cinema as an empathy machine. What Ebert was referring to is the way that movies impact us as audiences and carry us into the minds of persons having experiences totally outside of our ordinary lives. I think the way great films achieve high levels of emotional empathy has to do with the way that filmmakers use their craft to not just let us observe a story at a safe distance, but to feel like we ourselves are traveling with the characters on their journey. Previously, we've talked about the meaning of subjective and objective character perspective in establishing a strong emotional link with the audience. As I mentioned, every tool at a filmmaker's disposal contributes to achieving the effect of subjective or objective perspective. The question to ask of every choice when seen through this filter is if the filmmaker is altering the audience's perception of the reality of the scene in a way that aligns the audience to a character's interior emotional state, or if instead the filmmakers are using their tools only to provide information about the scene, as if at a distance. In this video, I want to explore a more specific example of the way lenses can be used to achieve this effect. How does the lens contribute to a subjective or objective perspective? When we talk about lenses, we define the way that these lenses see in terms of focal length, which we describe through a measurement of millimeters. The focal length of the lens ranges from being described as wide, say 12 millimeters to 35 millimeters, medium, 35 millimeters to 75 millimeters, or long at 75 millimeters to 300 millimeters or beyond. These millimeters relate to the differing size in the field of vision or angle of acceptance that the lenses capture. Wide lenses have a large field of vision and thus capture more of what's in front of them than longer lenses which have a narrower field of vision. The important thing to understand is that the way these different lenses see reality is always being compared against the standard of our own human eye. The millimeter of lens that sees from the same vantage point as our human eye is called the normal lens, and it is usually 50 millimeters, depending on the size of the digital sensor or film strip that the image is being captured onto. Measuring against that standard, lenses wider than 50 millimeters distort reality in a way that causes us to perceive space and objects differently than our own eye normally would. Rooms feel larger, movement feels faster than it actually is. The results of this on both long and wide lenses is called compression or distortion. Now the result may or may not be quite pleasing to look at depending on the scene and the framing, but what is important for our purposes is considering how the impact of that distortion affects the emotional reality of the scene. An objective choice would be to shoot closer to the way our eyes see. A normal lensing would achieve that goal. A subjective choice would be to shoot on a wider or longer lens than the way our eye normally sees. If that lensing is deployed in the service of what the characters are experiencing in the scene, the audience will interpret that visual design as representative of the emotions the characters are experiencing. When shooting on a longer lens, the angle of acceptance of the lens is narrower than a wider lens. This means that the lens sees less of the environment around what is at the center of its visual field. Additionally, depth of field becomes shallower, as noticed in the bokeh or out-of-focus elements that fall outside the focus of the lens. A compression also happens to facial features, which is often thought to be flattering on longer lenses. Now, because all these elements heighten the way we experience what is going on in the frame, it suggests to the audience a subtle psychological quality that may be going on in the thought process of the characters or the storytelling. One remarkable example of an exceptionally long lens being used to stage a wide shot of a scene is in 2011's Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. On a 2000 millimeter lens and on a one mile airstrip, we see a plane and it looks as though it's headed straight for the two men. Because of the way the lens is compressing the space and magnifying what is far away from it, we get a sense of impending danger when there really is none. Interfacing with our character on screen left's performance, we get a funny and insightful glimpse of what is going on with his anxiety in the scene. This whole staging elevates what could have been a very ordinary or uninteresting objective wide shot filmed at a distance to a more subjective and psychologically insightful shot. Spike Jones uses long lenses to great effect in this scene in her. So what was it like being married? Well, that's hard for sure. 
When we begin with Joaquin Phoenix on the train, we're focused on his face as he's in conversation with his OS. A long lens is being used to keep us focused in his headspace. Well, we grew up together. I, mean, I used to read all of her writing all through her masters and PhD. And she read every word I ever wrote. And we were a big influence on each other. In what way did you influence her? As he begins to recall the memories of his ex-wife, most of these memory fragments are presented to us on longer than normal lenses. Even though these scenes are often what would have been dialogue scenes and are framed in conventional over-the-shoulder shots, longer than ordinary lenses are being used that obscure the nature of the environments where the scenes are taking place. We're given a great deal of psychological flavor to each of these moments giving them the extra quality of recovered memory. I still find myself having conversations with her in my mind, rehashing old arguments and defending myself against something she said about me. The Coen brothers, however, are known for exactly the opposite technique. In their dialogue scenes, wider than normal boxes are often used. I'd be very surprised if our suspect was from Brainerd. Yeah. These shots have distortion as well, and more visible environment is exposed in them. Because the Coen brothers are often juggling their unique humor in their shot design. You got a good sarsaparilla. Sioux City sarsaparilla. The wider lensing lends a more comedic and less serious sensibility to the shot as well. The wide lens has a very large angle of acceptance, which actually expands the perception of space the lens sees compared to our eye. The distortion the lens brings can often be perceived as unflattering to the human face. That distortion, however, can be perfect in a scene like this from Requiem for a Dream, or in making a character feel dreadfully alone in a room, like this shot in Spike Jonze's Her. Wider lenses typically have a lot of depth of field, which can open up opportunities for how you frame the scene. When Greg Toland and Orson Welles started staging with wide depth of field in Citizen Kane, this was a major breakthrough in film grammar and opened up the rich depth of possibilities to how you compose a frame. Suddenly you could stage multiple planes of action in a single shot. But I'm the boy's father. It's going to be done exactly the way I've told Mr. Thatcher. Cinema is a language, but it's unique among languages because as we have adapted it as a medium to tell stories, we have found ways to make the tools of the medium and the grammar of film language feel congruent with the way we actually think, with the way we remember experiences, and with the way we dream or imagine. This is one reason why film is so ubiquitous and accessible, even to us as children. The tools of filmmaking are able to represent thought and connect more deeply and immediately with our emotions than many other mediums. The way we intuitively navigate films landscape of signs and symbols is very much the way we navigate a dream. And every tool that filmmakers use to tell stories is a part of that process. The next time you watch a scene in a film that you feel is working well, look for telltale signs of what lenses the filmmakers are using. Becoming fluent in the way scenes are lensed will reveal to you the depth of power that lens choices have in communicating emotions, psychology, and character perspective.